Hey guys, welcome back to our review of McLaren and our prediction for the 2020 season. I hope you're really enjoying what we've got to offer here. Hello everyone, and welcome back guys to episode 4 of Jamie183 and myself's F1 2020 season preview, where today we're here back for the resurgence of 2019, the feel-good story that I'm sure all of us can get on board the hype train for. It is, of course, McLaren. Now, before we get into this, obviously make sure you go subscribe to Jamie, Jamie183 on YouTube, and follow him over on Twitter, Jamie underscore 183, as well as obviously myself. All our socials will be down in the bottom. But Jamie, you feeling good coming into this one? I'm very happy, yeah. I'm, in, I'm looking forward to talking about McLaren. They're an exciting team. I do like them. So yeah, looking forward to it. So 2019 then, obviously, like we've done with all of the videos so far, we'll have a bit of a recap of the season. And I think, you know, like I said, it was the feel-good story of F1 2019, really. You know, it was a resurgence from a team that needed to be on top. We saw, um, obviously, most famously, Gasly. Uh, not Gasly, Sainz. <laughs> I don't know when Sainz drove. I don't know when Gasly drove confused. from McLaren. Uh, but, yeah, we saw Sainz get that podium in Brazil. And, obviously, that was, what, McLaren's first podium since Australia 2014. It really has been a very, very long time since we last saw them towards the front of the field. But, yeah... 2019, it was a good season for McLaren. I think we can both agree with that. It was a very good season. I, like, every, pretty much every weekend, especially the mid part and the second part, they were best of the rest. Like, they can't really ask for much more when the season before they were barely beating Williams. So, yeah, a very good season for them. Now, obviously, you say about how they were best of the rest, and I can completely agree with you. And I think that was what allowed... I mean, Carlos Sainz, obviously, when you take out Gasly and Albon because they had half a season in Renault, Carlos Sainz nearly scored double anyone else from the best of the rest. Daniel Ricciardo yeah. was the next best of the rest over the course of 2019, and he scored 54 points to Carlos Sainz's 96. Now, I think it was safe to say, you know, that whole package, Sainz, Norris, McLaren, they all worked really well with each other. Do we think, you know, we've seen from Sainz before, he's been a fairly, a fairly good driver, but he's never been anything special. Do we think, you know, that having Lando on the team and McLaren making this resurgence really allowed Sainz to prove just how good he can be in Formula 1? Yeah, definitely. Um, like, you saw back in, like, 2016, 17, he was solid, but obviously in Toro Rosso, there's not much he can really do. But then in the Renault, I think Renault can be a very hard place to, like, work. It's almost, like, too corporate for anyone to really, like, do well, it feels like. Uh, and then just the team that's aren't really set up to do, to have success, it feels like. But yeah, science since going to McLaren has been sort of, like, unleashed. He was very, very consistent. I feel like that's the main the main thing you need in the midfield of F1. Um, but also it helps that I think the car was completely comfortably better than any other car in the midfield for the most part um we saw Renault were good like at the high speed tracks but across like as an all-rounder the McLaren was completely better than any other car yeah I think. and I think that's but probably yeah. what we can agree on when we say about McLaren having the best all-round car it almost feels to me like we're going back to Mercedes where they probably had enough down the straights to beat Ferrari and enough in the corners to beat Red Bull do we think McLaren was sort of in that same position against the midfield they had enough everywhere that no one could really be a threat consistently. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. You saw, I think Renault's um, top speed was better. Um, but other than that, none none of the teams were consistent enough other than McLaren to really hold a candle over the whole season. So yeah, McLaren comfortably had it. Like I think they could secured it with like two races left, which says a lot when you can get like 43 points a race. So, and in the midfield, the real estate, you're going to get like 20 points at most. So yeah. Yeah, it definitely was... Yeah, it's a solid, solid rebuilding season. Now, luckily, we've timed this recording quite well. McLaren have obviously just announced their new 2020 Challenger. Obviously, I've already made a video on that as well. Cheeky plug right there. But I noticed during the McLaren interviews, they spoke about how in 2020, they're still talking about the midfield. So it's quite clear to me that McLaren aren't focusing on the top three just yet. Now, do we think that's going to come in 2021 then? Do we think... 2020 is just going to be a year of stagnation is probably the wrong word but just solidifying that p4 and then 2021 is where they really go for it i think definitely like there's a lot of tough challenges in the midfield like you see racing point have got a lot of money to affect this car uh renault should have the potential to be there but they always seem to mess it up uh you have other teams like toro rosso or alpha tori could be decent and like realistically we've seen so many times these midfield teams giving it large about how they're going to beat red bull this year 
and like it never happens so maybe mclaren has sort of learned from their mistakes and thought don't like blow our own trumpet too hard and like almost settle for or set the expectations a bit lower so they don't feel like they're disappointed themselves and i think fourth place is a good a very good aim for them this season definitely yeah fourth place definitely you know i, I mean when you look at 2019 they were what 54 points ahead of renault by the end of the championship and when you're talking percentages that's like a 30 percent more than a renault i mean that's a bigger margin than mercedes scored over ferrari in terms of percentages really i think that puts into perspective just how dominant mclaren were in the midfield i mean when you look over the course of the season we've got obviously that podium at brazil three p5s over the course of the season and then i mean when you look at obviously on wikipedia it's green if they were in the points and then purple if they're outside there aren't many purples there whatsoever a few unlucky retirements mainly for norris i think it's safe to agree as well but it was yeah just a textbook example of being consistent over a course of a season and i think mclaren probably you could argue after mercedes were the most consistent team of 2019 obviously they never had the pace to fight at the front of the field but you can't deny as you know i think they called it 2019 a performance recovery program or something along those lines they they did that well yeah very well and the the key to midfield success is that consistency like you see every week because it's so tightly packed that you can some some weeks like a Renault will be in the top 10 some weeks they'll be in the out in q1 stuff like that and same with alfa romeo racing point they can all be all over the place but the key for mclaren i think pretty much every week they had a car in q3 which is yeah they're really important because with overtaking being so difficult like to get in the points you've got to be getting those close to the points to start with and mclaren were doing that consistently and that really helps with getting like getting double points finishes every single week really yes. so now then i want to talk about obviously we mentioned red bull last time out with honda mclaren obviously ditched the honda engine and i think it's one of at least in my opinion in recent times one of the only things we've seen in Formula 1 where two companies or two groups have gone away from each other and both seem to have come out on top. It but it seems like both sides of that divorce almost actually worked out quite well, which is almost quite a happy thing at the end of the day. But McLaren, you know, I personally, I mean, we've mentioned this before, I do honestly believe that some of McLaren's success has come from no longer having Mr. Toxim, Toxic himself, Fernando Alonso, in that team. Would you agree? No. <laughs> Fair <I wish>. enough. <laughs> <laughs> to be brutally honest, I think the only thing that, um, like, I, I kind of agree that it's it's difficult for teams like, uh, or manufacturers like Honda to really work under the intense high pressure that the management and Fernando Alonso were giving them. But also... I think Alonso would have got a lot more out of the car than Sainz or Norris did this season. But it's that little balance of what you actually want. Uh, want do you want like uh, consistency and not much going wrong, or do you want a driver who can really pull something special out of the bag? I think yeah, we'll we'll agree to disagree there because I don't think Fernando Alonso, at least towards the end of his career, was that incredibly special anymore. <laughs> but I think yeah, we'll we'll gloss over that too much before it just becomes a big big debate between the pair of us there now obviously mclaren we've spoke about 2019 there's not really it's again we've we've mentioned this so many times this is probably the worst season to have tried to do previews for in about the last five ten years because it very much just feels like an f1 2019.5 uh it's yeah very very odd now in terms of longer term development then do we believe, let's say by 2025, obviously McLaren will have Mercedes engines again. That's obviously going to be a big talking point ready for 2021. Do we believe McLaren, first of all, can build a car capable of a world championship? And do we believe Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris are capable of delivering consistent enough performances to pick up a world championship? I personally would be very surprised if the drivers are good enough. Um, but I think with Mercedes engines... It really depends. It's like a straight fight between who can build the better car effectively. And I would lean towards Mercedes because if they've got the integration with the engine, they know what they're doing with it. Rather than being a customer team like McLaren, it might be quite difficult. But there's no reason why not. We saw it like the early 2010s. Um, McLaren were a customer team and still were right up there fighting for the world titles. But to be honest, if they're going up against the likes of Leclerc at Ferrari and Verstappen at Red Bull, I don't, I don't see... Sainz and Norris being able to fight those over a full season if the cars are pretty similar. Obviously, if the cars are really dominant, there's no reason why 
Norris or Science couldn't win a title, but I'd be surprised if that happens. Yeah, so interesting, obviously, you mentioned in there about how obviously McLaren would be a customer team. I think we can both agree, you know, when you look at the history and the legacy of McLaren in Formula 1. Now, obviously, things might have changed now with Mercedes being in the position they're in. They definitely aren't, you know, McLaren and Mercedes, they're kind of two words, at least for me, that are sort of synonymous with each other as well. You know, it, it just works. Those two words together, they, they just feel right in the and world. And it's iconic. It's like when when we were growing up, at least, it's like McLaren and Mercedes were like the big team almost, as well as Ferrari. But I really hope it's a success. Like, I like McLaren a lot. Um, I do like the drivers. Uh, would you believe it? But yeah, I, re- I really hope that they, they do have success again. Um, and yeah, with with the amount of years they've been struggling with Honda and then Renault have been okay, but uh, not great last year, then decent in 2019. So yeah, yeah I really hope it's a success um, and they can get back to the top where they belong. So yeah, I think we can both safely say we, we want to see Mis- uh, sorry McLaren even back up at the front of the field then. So obviously, yeah, 2020 is... I think we can sort of recap. It's probably going to be a season of solidifying for that fourth place. 2021, it's definitely... I feel like McLaren have got the most potential to cause an upset. Either them or Red Bull, in my eyes, are the ones that, you know, McLaren have got, the, you know, this new Mercedes, you know, it's coming back together. Mercedes, McLaren, back together at last. They've got a lot of potential to be, you know, it could be one of those things, honestly, for me, where 2021 rolls around and suddenly McLaren are three, four tenths clear at the top. Now, that's probably a bit optimistic in thinking as well, because, you know, Mercedes are just such a well-oiled and refined machine. But, I mean, let's talk about those drivers then. Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz. We've spoke about, obviously, how consistent Sainz was in that car. What are your views then on Lando Norris's season? Uh, I think for a rookie season, it's a very good, a very acceptable season to have. I do think that he's a little bit overhyped by being British and because people like him because he's like an internet personality almost. Uh, but yeah, he's a good driver. I, I do like him. Um, but for a rookie season, it's about what you could expect. Obviously, he got a little bit unlucky with some retirements here and there, but stuff like in Spain and in Monaco and in some places, he just didn't have the pace to get into Q3 and get in those points. So... I, I do like the guy and I hope he improves. Um, but yeah, I do feel like he's a little bit overhyped by the British media and by people on Twitter. But yeah, that's my own opinion. So I'll leave you to uh, decide what you think about Fair that. Fair enough. Now, we sort of spoke before the last video then, and this was completely off topic about Lewis Hamilton and how you were saying the key indicator to pace is qualifying. Now, Lando Norris did obviously out-qualify Carlos Sainz over the course of 2019. I think it was 11-10 in the end, wasn't it? Going into Abu Dhabi, it was the only yes, yeah. qualifying battle still left to be decided. Do we think then 2020 Lando Norris can match Sainz? It's that race pace. I think he's lacking a little bit, and whether it's down to like getting a good start or whatever, like maybe a bit of luck here and there with safety cars and whatnot. But if he can improve the race pace, there's no reason why he can't match Sainz. I don't think Sainz is like an impossible target. I think. For example, if you talk about Red Bull, you'd say, can Albon match Verstappen? It's a clear no. But when you think, can Norris beat Sainz? It's like, yeah, why not? Like, Sainz isn't unbeatable. Um, so, yeah, I think he could do if he improves that race pace a bit. Maybe he gets a bit more luck here and there. Um, then there's a reason why he can't. And if he can, then it'll be really impressive because McLaren should be securing a strong fourth if both drivers are getting, like, 80-plus points a season. Fair enough. Fair enough, yeah, I think. As, yeah, certainly I think McLaren is one of those difficult teams where you can talk about 2019, 2020, hope, in almost sort of a weird way, you hope it's quite a quiet season for them, you know, just an easy P4, consistent top 10 finishes, you know, obviously between sort of 6th and 10th, depending on what happens to the big three teams. And then I think 2021 is the year when I think a lot more eyes should be pinned to McLaren. But do you think there's anything else we need to add then? Pretty sure it covers everything, pretty much. I think, yeah, we've hopefully done an all right job. But anyway, though, guys, let us know your thoughts and feelings about McLaren as we head into 2020. Thank you, Jamie, once again for joining me on this sort of podcast-style video as No problem. Well. Pleasure to be but, here. But, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Do get yourself subscribed if you're new around here. And hopefully we will see you guys next time where we will be talking about Renault. And I think... For those of you that know Jamie well enough, that is going to be a fun one for me just to sit back and relax. (laughs) Looking forward to it.